For more on this, we turn to Sean Carroll. He's the president and CEO of Anera. That's a nonprofit helping refugees in the Middle East. For the last six months, they've been delivering medicine, water, and food in Gaza, including some 150,000 meals a day. Sean, I just want to begin with your reaction to this news. What did you think when you heard about the killing of these World Central Kitchen aid workers? I thought, no, this this can't be. How can this be? They can't, this can't be. This this can't be explained. It, it can't be. And then devastation. Um, World Central Kitchen are is a partner. Their colleagues, their friends, the people who were killed are people that our team in Gaza work with. So this was devastating, devastating news. And we should say to you and your team know this loss. Last month, you lost one of your team members, Musa Shawa, your logistics coordinator in Gaza, he was killed in an Israeli airstrike after sheltering with his family in Deir al-Bala after he'd been out distributing aid. We are so sorry for your loss. But I have to ask, do you believe it's possible for aid workers to work safely in Gaza right now? Well, look, we've made a decision to pause our work and that's not a decision we came to lightly. Our Palestinian staff who, who live in the communities, who work in the communities they're, they're from and live in, they've never really had safety, but they kept going. And now this uh, level of, of depravity and inexplicable uh, killing, and I, I know there are questions and debates about whether it was intentional or unintentional. I think we need to ask ourselves, is, is one better than the other? If this was unintentional, how could this happen? This was a clearly marked humanitarian aid convoy of three cars with World Central Kitchen uh, logo uh, and lettering uh, clearly displayed. So how could it be an accident? And, and, and the, the evidence we've seen so far and what I've heard from our colleagues at World Central Kitchen suggested that it, that it wasn't an accident, it was intentional. Well, let me ask you about that, because Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has, in fact, said it was an unintentional strike, that it was what he called a tragic accident. I know you cited some of the evidence why you believe it wasn't, but why do you believe Israel would target humanitarian aid workers? I, you know, I, I don't know, and I think that's the question we all have to ask, and I think Israeli society and the Israeli government and the Israeli military need to ask themselves as well. Is this contributing to making Israel and Israelis safer? I, I, I don't see how it, it could be. So after the first reaction of shock and despair, the next reaction is, how could this be? It doesn't make any sense. I, I can't make any sense of it. How would this be serving any objectives that, that make sense for anybody, for any side of this uh, conflict? Netanyahu has also pledged a thorough investigation. U.S. officials have said today they hope it will be swift and that the findings will be made public. Do you have faith that the Israeli government can investigate its own forces in this case? When an investigation is, is needed, the, the, the parties to the, to the conflict, to the accident, to the incident, to the uh, subject being investigated are, 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 are not the best investigators. We, we, we should have an independent investigation. We would like to have it for our co-worker, Musa Shawa, who was killed uh, just under a month ago. We still don't have an explanation on, on that killing. This is an absolute minimum requirement, uh, certainly for World Central Kitchen, and, and but for all of us, uh, because we're wondering, are, are we next? Sean, have you had communications directly with Israeli officials about the safety of your team on the ground in Gaza? Sure, we communicate all the time. Uh, we we have to deconflict the the areas we work, the shelters where our staff and their families are staying, uh, where our staff are sheltering, our distribution centers, our cars. Uh, that all has to be deconflicted. We share the coordinates, the map coordinates of those, uh, and and we and we check in. We check in with them to verify, or they check in with us. Um, but we had a a check in from them four days before Musa Shawa was was killed in an airstrike and. And, and that and, and this World Central Kitchen uh, uh, killing now is, uh, uh, makes us worried. It makes us feel like it's, it's not working. When you say it's not working, to be clear, you're saying you are in constant contact. Groups on the ground are informing Israeli officials about your location and your coordinates. There's no way you see Israeli officials would not have known these were aid workers. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I mean, that certainly looks like the case with the World Central Kitchen, uh, the very clearly marked uh, cars in a three-car convoy. And this is something that's been an issue among many international NGOs of, throughout the course of this war. And the deconfliction is actually done with the military, with the IDF. And so uh, the conversations and the communications feel like 
uh, they're genuine and we're all doing the right thing and, and we're deconflicting and we're getting things put into the system. But if people are killed when they shouldn't be, then obviously we we we, uh, we end up questioning whether this is, is working and it doesn't seem to be working. And what has been the response from Israeli officials when you raise those concerns? Well, we don't, we'd like a response on, on the death of our colleague. We don't have any response. Um, there seemed to be interest initially when they mistakenly thought he was an American citizen. Um, uh, that interest seemed to lessen when uh, we said he didn't have a U.S. passport, he's a Palestinian. Um, we don't have a response yet. I hope we'll get a response. And I'm sure World Central Kitchen is, is very much uh, going to be demanding uh, an explanation uh, for the death of their staff. That is Sean Carroll, president and CEO of ANERA, a nonprofit helping people in Gaza, spending operations for now. Mr. Carroll, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me.